All right, guys, welcome to Gay Men Going Deeper, a podcast by the Gay Men's Brotherhood, where we talk about personal development, mental health, and sexuality. We are your hosts. My name is Michael Diario. I am a life and wellness coach specializing in sexuality, relationships, and self-confidence. We also have Matt Lancetel. He is an intuitive life and spiritual coach and counselor focusing on healing and empowerment. And we have Reno Johnston. He is a life coach, business consultant, and director of marketing for the Body Electric School. We each have our own coaching practice, but in this podcast, we're sharing all of our best stuff. This episode is being released on June 1st, which is the beginning of Pride Month in many parts of the world. So today, what we're talking about is celebrating diversity in the gay community. We'll be talking about how we have felt included in the gay community, how we have felt excluded, how we can create space for more diversity, and how we could learn to belong. So a reminder, we will be continuing this discussion on the last Thursday of the month in the Gay Men's Brotherhood Zoom Hangout. This is where we give you guys, our viewers and listeners, a chance to share your thoughts on the topics that we discuss here. So if you want to join us, go to the private Gay Men's Brotherhood Facebook group and check out the events tab to RSVP. This podcast and YouTube channel are listener and viewer supported. So if you enjoy what we're creating, you can support us by making a donation to the show by using the link in the show notes. You could also subscribe to get early access to episodes on Apple Podcasts. And all of your support helps us to continue create, continue to create making content and supporting our community. So we thank you very much in advance. And finally, if you're looking to accelerate your personal development journey, please check out our coaching collection. It includes our two courses, Healing Your Shame, Building Better Relationships, plus over 45 premium personal development coaching videos on the topics that we talk about here, body positivity, relationships, self-confidence, and community. So head over to gaymengoingdeeper.com for more info. All right, let's jump in. Today, we're talking about celebrating diversity in the gay community. When I say gay community, what images come to mind? Who is the gay community? For many people, I'm sure that it's a rather homogenous image that comes to mind. Uh, likely going to be, I'm going to take a wild guess here, young party boys, pretty boys, watching drag race, drinking their vodka sodas, dancing under the disco ball, covered in glitter, wearing their booty shorts. And yes, that is definitely part of the gay community. And personally, I got to say, I love that part of it. I got a hard on for disco and glitter. I love it. it. Makes me very happy. But here's the thing. I also got a hard on for things like quiet nature walks, reading my tarot cards, spirituality, deep conversations. But that, funnily enough, is not celebrated as much as being part of the gay community. Now, is it? And so that's what we're talking about here today. It is Pride Month, and I think the gay community is really good at celebrating our gayness. Absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I think it's only one perspective. It's only one aspect of it that we see a lot of. And it's the dominant perspective, and unfortunately, that excludes a lot of people. Right? It doesn't leave room for the diverse interests of who we actually are, right? So I was talking about tarot and spirituality. Like, where where is that celebration? Um, it doesn't leave room for diverse interests, experiences, perspectives. And I think that that's where we kind of go wrong with it a little bit. And personally, you know, I think it gets kind of boring having just a one note image of the gay community. Um, that's just me speaking here. So if this resonates with you, if you feel me on this, and I know a lot of you do, then we have got two options as people that are part of this gay community. One, we could hate it, complain about it blame everyone else about it, blame the world, blame the gay community, blame others, and further isolate yourself from it. They're over there. I'm over here. That's them. This is me. I'm not part of that. It's option one. Or option two, you could do your part to change it, which is what we're doing here today. Personally, I do this with my coaching at Willismo, the, the work I do within the Gay Men's Brotherhood and on this podcast. That's sort of my decision. My decision is, yes, it's not great. Yes, it's exclusionary, but you know what? I'm not going to complain about it. I want to try to change it. Um, Matt and Reno, I know, strong, know strongly that I advocated for this episode because I, I feel very passionate about this. It's very near and dear to my heart. A lot of people that I talk to, a lot of clients or otherwise, will tell me their biggest issue with the gay community is that it's exclusionary. And that's such a shame because we are such a small, small part of the world's population. Why are we excluding ourselves? 
So yes, I believe that we all deserve to have a place at the table of the gay community. And today, the purpose of this episode is to take one step closer to that. We want to break down this us versus them viewpoint that describes the gay community over here and you on the outside of it, or the other way around, you on the inside looking outside, right? Uh, that only creates more isolation, more loneliness, and it's the opposite of belonging. So as I see it, there are two parts to the solution, and I'm really curious to hear what Matt and Reno have to say about this. But I see two parts to the solution. For those of you who are on the inside, and you know who you are, don't don't lie, don't pretend. You're on the inside. You're 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 one of the the ones. Um, we have to learn how to create space for others. We need to make room at the table, so to speak. But then for those who feel left out, and you know who you are, you have to learn how to take up space. It's a two pronged solution here: creating space and taking up space. Again, the way I see it is if you identify as queer on any end of that spectrum, you are the gay community. It's not over there. It's you, right? It is your right. It is your responsibility to show up and take your place at the table. So let's get started. First question we have is in what ways have we felt included as part of the gay community and in what ways have we felt excluded? Because I talked about it kind of a, as a one or the other, but the truth is we've probably all felt a little bit of both. So let's start off with Reno. Let's go to you for this one. Mm. So included, yeah. Yeah, start with included. How have you felt included? And then we can talk about how you felt excluded. Um, so what I would say is I started to experience more inclusion um, as I started connecting to, to be honest, it was to more like groups that shared the experience of, of feeling marginalized. Um, I remember probably th there was a point where I had connected with this organization called QPOC, um, and it was actually in its early stages of being created. And so I was part of that process. Um, we It started in a living room and we were just kind of spitballing ideas about how we could create community as um, queer people of color. And before we knew it, there was an event envisioned and what ended up happening as a result is suddenly there was this community and these ongoing events centered around um, queer people of color. And I would say that that was more or less like one of the first times that I really felt like I was part of a community within the LGBTQIA asterisk umbrella, you know, and um, and then I would say it continued. Um, but what I felt, what I find interesting about my experience of inclusion within the gay community is that I actually feel more of that inclusion within, um, let's say, pockets that fall under the LGBTQ umbrella the queer umbrella, but aren't specifically gay. So like I go to this event called um, Babes on Babes and it's like, it's quite femme. Um, and there are a lot of femme identifying, female bodied, um, like femme presenting individuals there. And it's also just like quite queer. And I feel so sort of, like welcomed, invited, celebrated in that space every time I go. Uh, and so these are just like a couple of examples, I would say, of, of where I felt the most included. And I think the final, and this is where, mm, this is where maybe inclusion in the context of the, the gay community, specifically gay men comes into play would be um, this community here, for example, when I started spending time within the Gay Men's Brotherhood, I started to notice 
that that was my experience, that I was starting to feel included and more connected to, um, you know, a community, a gay community. Um, and then again, with the, with the, um, the body electric school community, um, these were some, <clears throat> some of the other communities where I noticed that I was feeling um, included again. So yeah, those, those are some of the examples sort of from the earliest to like the more recent. And there's one I'm leaving out, I just remembered, and that's a we, it's called we space. And that was, um, it, I don't think it exists now, but at the time it was also really powerful for me to be engaging and interacting with groups of gay men in what felt like a really like deep and meaningful way. Um, so that, that's been great. I've experienced that here and in some of the aforementioned communities. Yeah. Can you yeah. tell us the, the the first one that you said the acronym? What is it? What is it again? Can you say it again? QPOC. Oh, QPOC. Q-P-O-C. Q -T -P -O -C. Okay, so cool. I think it's a queer trans people of color. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still active? Yeah, they are. Um, and they do they're they're mainly active here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is my hometown that I'm visiting right now. Um and they've been active for years and they do like dance parties. They they're involved in community engagement. And actually um, the founder is, is now involved in politics. So um, their name is uh, Uzoma and they're currently involved in politics. And so it's been amazing to see um, their evolution as well in, in how they're broadening their reach. Mm -hmm. And 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 advocating for inclusion really is what they're up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And how have you? Did you already answer about the ex exclusion? Yeah, um, I didn't. Ex you know, with regard to exclusion, I think there. I mean, there are a lot of obvious ways. Like, um, one one of the more obvious ways was not not seeing, like, not always seeing myself or people who look like me or identify as I do represented within the gay community. I know that like some of my earliest memories would be like going to the club and seeing that like all the go-go dancers or all the like those promos of like sexy men or people on ads and stuff like everything I was seeing it was always like centered around um, people who didn't look like me you know um, and so that that definitely I think in a subliminal way, in, in implicit and explicit ways, um, contributed to this idea, you know, that I like, that I, that I was kind of like an outsider on the inside or something like that. Mm. Um, and then also, I just always found myself to be a, a bit of an enigma, a bit of an oddball within the context of the gay community, because, you know, it was like, I watched RuPaul because my best friend did, not because I actually really, you know, was into it. Like I, you know, I wasn't I'm Britney Spears. Like I kind of listened to her, but like <laughs> not really, you know, like I don't know. It's and I know I'm making generalizations here, but I just there was a there were a lot of things that I saw that seemed quintessentially gay and part of yeah. the gay community, and I was like, well, certain <clears throat> things, you know, like I'm I'm into other stuff and. I just don't see on television or in film or in the gay community, like people who are into the things that I'm into or representation of people who are into the things that I'm into. So I found myself kind of wandering around and 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 wondering, you know, where where are these people? Where am I? Where are these spaces? And in you know, in later years started to to find those places, but I, and let me just say one more thing, and that is that I know that being gay, first, first of all, I know that being gay is about way more than like vodka sodas and Britney Spears and, and like RuPaul's Drag Race and all of that stuff. I know that. Um, and, and also, you know, it like, my being gay is like my sexual orientation. There's so much more to it than that. And I think one of the things that I would love to see is 
this sort of embracing and expression of and celebration of like the diversity that actually exists within the gay community and within each of us, even those people who sort of look like or appear to fall under these like um, stereotypical categories, you know, it's like, I know there's more going on there, right? Yeah. hundred percent. And that's what we're doing here, right? It's about celebrating the diversity within this little umbrella of LGBTQIA+, totally. plus, right? Like all the oddballs, <clears throat> uh, all the weir weirdos, as you might want to call yourself, like, you're, you're you belong here we we mm -hmm. belong here we all have that aspect yeah. of us right like if i saw you out in a tank top for example michael if you were just like out in a tank top or whatever like doing your thing which we probably have in common as well yeah i like, i might make assumptions about you of right course, yeah. but i didn't know that you're like into tarot and <laughs> spirituality and stuff but i know that because we've like gone deeper you know gay men yeah. going deeper, right yeah yeah solid point yeah. All right, let's go over to Matt. Matt, how have you felt uh, included and excluded in the gay community? Mm. Well, I just want to say off the top, great job, Michael. That was a great, uh, great intro. Thanks for introing us. And Reno, thanks for slowing us down. I needed <laughs> that. I'm just like, I'm in a weird spot today. So, um, okay, let me, let me connect in and see. This is a this is a hot button topic for me, um, the inclusion exclusion aspect of things. Um, the first thing that came to mind was included or excluded for my inauthentic self or my authentic self. Um, I've experienced inclusion in the gay community when I was abandoning myself, um, when I was drinking, doing drugs. Um, saying the right things, being more promiscuous and, and very, um, you know, posting selfies. And I was playing the, the, um, the role of the mainstream gay, I'll say, right? So mm -hmm. when we think about the gay, well, when I think about the gay community, I think kind of there's that mainstream culture, and then you have these kind of offshoots. So you have the big table, and then you have all the small tables around it. Um, I think this is changing in a very big way. I think the big table's getting smaller, and the smaller tables are getting bigger. Um, which is quite or quite good, in my opinion, because I think that's what d diversity is. It's about um, you know some people leaving the big table because they no longer feel aligned to it and moving to the smaller tables where they're uh, honoring their most authentic self. So, um, I would say exclusion for me is probably something I do to myself. Because uh, if you look at me, I think I'm I'm kind of that quintessential gay guy, right? And I would get a lot of acceptance and and I do, you know, people gravitate towards me, they respect me, they look up to me. I've always kind of had that experience. And the exclusion comes from within. I exclude myself because I think for many years I was self-abandoning and I was betraying myself and like self-sacrificing and I got really angry at myself and I, I I didn't want to do that anymore. And then I think I swung to the far other side of the spectrum where I didn't allow myself to belong. And I kind of hit out while I was trying to find who I actually was authentically. And now I'm going through a period where I'm trying to like bring myself back into the community and trying to find my sense of belonging again. And it's been really hard. Um, I want to uh, I want to share a story that uh, of this weekend because I, I joined a uh, a hockey tournament this weekend. It was a gay hockey tournament, and it was it was interesting because it brought up all these things. And I'm like, um, I haven't seen a lot of these guys in a long time. I used to play, and then I kind of had some injuries, and I left and came back uh, just for the first time in four or five years. And I'll preface by saying I don't really drink. I obviously don't do drugs. Like I'll maybe drink once or twice a year. Um, that does really impact somebody's ability to belong in in a in a certain way because when everybody starts vibing on that same alcoholic level, like not alcoholic level, but alcohol level, um, everybody that's that's the vibe everyone's on. And then when you're not on that vibe, you can either pretend to be in that energy or you can you know, not like, so, and I don't, and it does, it definitely does impact, impact things. So, um, 
in the dressing room on the ice these sorts of things i i well actually i'll go i'll go back before i went i had a few intentions one of them was to open my heart and just be myself be very genuine be very authentic do not self sacrifice uh, do not abandon myself if everybody wants to do something and it's not in alignment to me don't do it um that was one of them and then the other thing that was extremely important for me this weekend was no judgment try my best not to judge did i succeed absolutely not <laughs> but did i probably judge a lot less than i would have 100% because i had this intention um so i did notice that i'm i'm a lot shyer than I thought I was. <laughs> um, I have this thing where I don't trust or feel safe with people right away. And these were all new people. I knew some of them, but I didn't know a lot of them. So in the dressing room, I was quite quiet. And I didn't say a lot because I am the person that my nervous system, it's like, I'm picking up on so much and processing so much information around me that it's like overwhelming for one. And I want to suss people out. <clears throat> so I was trying to kind of feel the vibe, like, you know, who, who's kind of the alpha person, who are the followers, who's this, who's that. So the whole time I was really trying to figure out the room and that involves a lot of observation. And this has been, this is just who I am. I'm, I'm in more of an observer. Um, I would describe myself as not an alpha, not a beta. I'm a sigma. I'm, I'm the guy on my own. I'm not, I'm not following the order of things. I'm really just over there kind of observing everything and, um, and I really love that about myself because I'm, I don't want to be a follower, nor do I want to be like a, a leader based off of power dynamic. I want to be a leader based off of heart centeredness, which would be more Sigma energy and, and presence. A Sigma relies on their presence. Their presence speaks um, in their leadership more as, as far as like, uh, or less than power. Um, so once I kind of started to feel a little bit more comfortable, I started just kind of speaking up and connecting with people, but <laughs> there's there I, I was carrying this energy of like all weekend of feeling like people were judging me mm -hmm. oh he's too quiet he's too shy and then I was I think people construe my shyness and my quietness and my introvertedness as he's an asshole and he thinks he's better than than us and and it's that's so not the case like um but I do think that sometimes people pick that up from me that I can be cold um but really I'm just shy and I'm trying to figure out uh things so this impairs my ability to belong and my ability to feel included. And I exclude myself in this respect. Um, I've just in the last probably four years since, you know, this, the brotherhood came into formation have been finally feeling a sense of inclusion for my authentic self. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, philosophical. I'm spiritual. I love psychology. Um, I love deep and meaningful conversations. I don't do superficial. Small talk is boring to me. Um, I don't like the mainstream um, gay culture at all. Actually, I find it to be very tacky. And <laughs> it's, again, I, I'm trying not to be judgmental, but for me, it's just not who I am at all. And, uh, and I think for, for me, the, the Gay Men's Brotherhood represents like depth. It represents the people who want to go to the places inside themselves that are the most authentic and not conform and um, and just be who they are, right? So th this has been a really beautiful um, four years for me, and I'm still still struggling with this because there's a lot of fear, and I think the fear for me uh, and why I don't allow myself to belong uh, and why I exclude myself is I'm I'm afraid of being judged, I'm afraid of being rejected, and when you peel back these layers. Um, this is this is my own judgments of myself. This is just everyone's a mirror to me, and 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 I'm realizing this in such a big way. So the less uh, I judge myself, and the more I heal some of my um, my insecurities, the the less I'm I'm afraid of the world judging me. So, yeah, yeah, big big topic. This is a big one. Exclusion and in, or inclusion and exclusion brings up so much stuff. I think for so many people. So. Uh, yeah. This weekend, this weekend was really powerful for me. And I think this, the intention of keeping my heart open was so powerful for me because uh, disconnection creates heart closure for me. 
And when I perceive disconnection in my environment, I close down. And my intention was, even if I do perceive it in my environment and someone gives me a nasty look and it, trust me, it happened this weekend where people were like, what are you doing here? Like that sort of energy, I just would open further, open further, smile more. You know what I mean? I just tried my best to stay in that really grounded, loving centered place. And, and it helped. It did help. So, yeah. Good. I love that. And I love that, uh, you know, you talked about the judgment piece, which we're going to get mm -hmm. to, I think, in the next question. Um, I just want to comment on the the analogy of the table, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, which I guess I started off in the beginning, but, you know, the the, the big table and the smaller little tables. At first, I thought, well, well, why don't we all just sit at one big table? All of us, there's room mm -hmm. <laughs> in this analogy for everybody. But then I'm like, well, I like that other way, too, because there could be many tables, as long as they're like of the same size or importance there's not one table that's like the head table and and all the other ones right like if, if that's going to be the case then there is something to be said for having um you know sub factions within this lgbtq umbrella of a community yeah. which is a good thing but not 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 one is more important or better than any other so i would say that i like that analogy going back yeah. to the table piece <clears throat> um for me i would say i am the tacky one <laughs> in your in your language mm -hmm. i love the tacky shit give it to me all it's so great like cover me in glitter put me under this go ball and put me with some lady gaga and i'm gonna have a great time um but i love that and that's that's not me being inauthentic that is very much authentically me like i yeah. before i even knew i was gay i was like dancing in like you know my mother's bathrobe um mm -hmm. to like what was it like a virgin ironically um and george michael of, of the time mm -hmm. so like i've always liked that kind of thing and so i think uh, for me it, it is very much i can play in the mainstream and i'm very fortunate that way um and it is authentic to me and i do present as mainstream and i think that that that's definitely privilege right there but also reno made a very good point there's so much more to me than that right like yeah. it's to someone's detriment to just label me as that and that's all because yes i can play in the shallow end but girl, I can play in the deep end too. Like we can go, we can go both places. And I think that is where, like, I feel included in the shallow end, of course. Um, but I felt excluded as I go deeper. Mm. Spirituality, those meaningful conversations, like all of that stuff. I found that when I was starting on the spiritual path and I was, you know, talking about this stuff, it was really exciting to me. I was reading all these spiritual books and personal development and self-help. I was like, just eating this all up. And it was like crickets <laughs> in, in the gay world. And they're just like, what are you talking about? That's boring or that's stupid spirituality. Yes, <laughs> bad word. Yeah. Um, and it's very, there's one or two people of my friends who were like, ooh, me too. Oh my God. And then it's kind of like this little whisper in the corner. Like, oh, did you, did you see that? that? Did you hear that podcast that Oprah did about blah, blah, blah? Did you read that book? And all of a sudden we have this thing going on. And like, it's, it's almost like this other thing happening over here. I'm like, wait a minute, why can't we? Also, why can't this be a conversation at the big table? And so that's how I have felt excluded. I would say these days, I, I don't feel that way anymore, probably because, as I said in the beginning, I am the change I want to see. So I talk about it anyway. If you don't like it, that's all fine. You can switch the channel. You don't need to yeah. follow me. You don't need to like me. You don't need, I, so that's all fine. But I'm going to do it, and I'm going to talk about it in hopes that other people who are like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Look at this gay guy who's talking about, I don't know, like, spirituality and chakras like that's cool i want to i want to i want more of that and so that's sort of where i'm at now with it mm. I but i that. think it's important that we talk about how we can create space for more diversity and when i say diversity i'm talking about everything diverse experiences diverse ages diverse races diverse interests all of it um and the the fear of judgment i think is a big reason why we don't do it but for the other side of it, how do we create space and say, hey, you over there, come join, come over here. We, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your experience. So that's the big question. And we'll start with Reno. It is a big question. It is a big question. And I think that um, what makes sense to me is that it's an ongoing challenge and it's an ongoing opportunity, you know? Um, and it really is both of those things. It's a challenge and it's an opportunity to create space for more diversity. Because what makes sense to me is that 
as we begin to create space for more diversity um, externally, I, I, I also think that there's an inner reconciliation that happens and vice versa, you know? Um, and I think that one of the ways that it makes sense to me to begin that conversation is to start to ask questions like, well, what's it like to be you, you know? Um, yeah, what's, what's it like to be you? Um, what's it like to be you in this world, you know? Um, what, what, is your, what is your experience? um you know being here and and to also begin to approach the world and people with the curiosity you know i think that 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 is a great place to start because what i observe is that when i'm closed off to period when I'm closed off, but when I'm closed off to what's happening like around me and outside of me, and I am consistently and repeatedly so narrow-sighted and narrow-focused, um, my experience is that I'm moving through the world with the blinders on, you know, and, and there's only room for, there's only room for, you know, for what I see or what matters to me or what makes sense to me, which which is okay, it's understandable. I acknowledge an innocence in that. You know, I think there's an innocence in 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 dare I say, there's an innocence in exclusion. There's an innocence in um the lack of diversity and the ongoing need to create space for it. You know, I, I'm gonna get like biblical here for a moment, but it's like Forgive them for they know not what they do, you know? And sometimes that's the case in my experience is we just don't know what we don't know until we know it and someone says, you know? So I think part of it is us being more curious, being more cautious, paying closer attention, asking those questions. And then I think another piece is turning that inward as well, you know, turning that inward and us like, like you know, having the courage to speak up and acknowledge where diversity is lacking, when and where it's lacking. And that can be a very difficult thing to do. It can be a very uncomfortable thing to do. You know, hey, I'm, you know, there's a, there's a problem here. Something's missing. You know, it's an uncomfortable thing to do. It's a vulnerable thing to do. But I think that's, that's it. <clears throat> part where we start, you know? Um, yeah. Beautifully said. Thank you. It is, it is a, it is a big question. It's a tough question. And, you know, it's, I think we also take responsibility for it. And I love, I love that you turned it inward as well. Like, yes, it's, it's, it's up to us, but I mean, imagine if we all did that though, right? Like, wouldn't it be nice if we all had that same, like asking those questions you asked, I love those by the way. Um, like just even just reflecting on that, I think, that in and of itself is a good start. But if we all did that, it'd be a very different looking community, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and again, like you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, how about you? How do you think we can, as a gay community, create space? This is something I'm actually really good at. This is one of my, my well, probably one of my greater skill sets. And I think, um, I think it's it comes innately in me because of high empathy, because when I feel people feeling in, excluded, I feel it. I feel their sadness. Like I'm the guy that when I was at the, the bar this weekend, I would look around and I could see people that felt uncomfortable, like they didn't belong. And I can feel that. And I would normally go up to them um, and, you know, try and make them feel comfortable. I didn't do that this weekend. I wanted to stay in my own experience. But um so I, I can feel it. I can pick up on this energy, but I do want to share how I got to the place where I was able to do it with, with um, 
not just using my empathy, but actually being um, more open to diversity, um, which was uh, healing and, and being very aware of unconscious bias and or conscious bias. So these are kind of the things that we've been programmed or conditioned to believe about certain groups of people and like the stereotypes and things, and we take them on and then we develop prejudice. Um, and in some extreme cases, we develop ra you know, uh, racism or ageism or these sorts of um, ideologies about people. And so I think we create space for diversity by getting really clear about the ways in which we are creating um, culture or energy or thoughts of exclusion based off of how we think somebody is. And we have to, in order to do that, we have to lead with a very uh, foundational principle in authentic relating called assume nothing, right? We have to assume nothing. We have to say, you know, get curious, like Reno said, uh, lead with, um, who is this person as opposed to this person is and filling in your own blank, right? Because we often do that. We see somebody's outer appearance and we're like, oh, they're this, we put them in this box. And, you know, nine times out of 10, people always surprise me, right? And they're not, they're not the story that I've told myself that they are. They're <laughs> like you said, Michael, you can keep the outside appearance of you might be that you're the the mainstream gay but you have you can play in both the shallow and the deep end of the pool so you know it's important to to lead with that um the we're going to do an episode at the end of this month about unconscious bias and it'll be a very real raw an episode so we can all unpack our our biases either present or past and and explore how they've been you know impacted um the type of community that or the way that we viewed the community so um, I think that's important. And then I I, uh, I was thinking like, just because somebody um, isn't with you doesn't mean that they're against you. Um, you know, like this, no this notion, and you said, bring everybody to the large table, like, I wouldn't be okay with that. I don't want to sit and have the conversation that probably a lot of the people at the large table are having. And I'm cool to be at my own table with, you know, very small group of people that want to have the conversations that I want to have. That's very okay with me. Um, so I'm working on that mentality just because somebody's not with me does not mean they're against me. And we live in a world right now where there's so much divisiveness, like politically, mm -hmm. um, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Everybody's like, you know, um, black and white. And I'm not talking about race here, but let's say either you choose the left or you choose the right. And if you're not on left or, or right, then, you know, you're wrong or whatever. It's like, what's wrong with dabbling in the gray in the mm -hmm. middle and what's wrong with being, you know, looking over at both sides and seeing, cool, I'll pull this from this side, I'll pull this from here, and I'm going to create my own ideologies. Um, because oftentimes we think like, oh, this person isn't showing up in the world the way that we're showing up, so they must be against me. It doesn't work like that, right? And when we, when we lead with uh, empathy and curiosity, we discover people um, as they are, and we, we give space for people to be as they are. So I just think that's that's so so uh, powerful, and the the, the more uh, you find yourself in people are against me, I would probably guarantee there is a lot of assumption happening and a lot of judgment coming from those assumptions. And if you check those assumptions in reality by leading with curiosity and asking people who they are, you'll you'll break through your unconscious bias and you'll start recognizing, um, you know, your own prejudice and and where those come from. And in this topic, actually, I do want to I do want to discern because in the episode you and I did Reno with um, uh, Mav and uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name right now. I hate when I do that. Edward, I think, yeah, um, about racism in the gay community. There was this whole debate on prejudice and preference that we were talking about and how our preferences aren't our prejudices. They don't have to be synonymous um but i think it's really important to ask ourselves where our preferences come from because our preferences don't have to be informed by our by our prejudices but sometimes they are so looking at okay why do i prefer this why do i prefer you know a white man over a black man or why do i prefer somebody that's you know older versus somebody that's younger whatever it might be where does that come from within that is it's an essential conversation to have with yourself um, and if you don't meet any prejudice in that, uh, and you got to be really honest with yourself, because your ego will probably try and convince you that there's no judgment, there's no prejudice at all. But there, there usually is for most people. Um, 
then it, your your preferences are informed by your true authentic desires right but sometimes they're informed by the stereotypes we've heard about certain groups of people um so I was really challenged to do this work at the very beginning of starting the brotherhood because I had a lot of unconscious bias that I had to move through and it was showing up in um, in racial ways. It was showing up in age, um, these sorts of things. And I was challenged by the community, but also challenged by myself to really work through this. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to hosting that episode at the end of June because um, I want to really share a lot more uh, details about uh, moving through unconscious bias and how I, th I think that's the answer uh, to creating more space in our, in our community for diversity. At some point, and thank you for that, Matt, mm -hmm. what you said at some point, if there's, if there's room for it, <clears throat> I, I also want to give space for you, Michael. Um, there's an experience I want to share that lends itself to the, the change that you're speaking to right now, Matt. Um, mm -hmm. based in which I experienced it. Um, and so I'd like to share that at some point, but Michael, I want to give you space. To... Why don't you go ahead and share it now? Because it's it's alive. Yeah, yeah go for it. Okay. So um, as we mentioned in the opening, I'm newly the director of marketing for the Body Electric School. And I went to my first all genders workshop in person in Victoria. Um, I think it was last month. Um, and I emphasize all genders because they offer workshops and experiences for men, women, and, and people of all genders. And I was, I was particular about attending an all genders. And again, this is where curiosity and an openness comes in. I was very particular about attending an all genders workshop because I wanted to learn, because I wanted to see where my blinders were on. I wanted to move into and through and beyond um, some of the barriers that I held around bodies, ages, genders, etc. So I, I attend this event and throughout the duration of this event, what I notice happen is I come in with these intellectual projections that create a let's call it a, a psychosomatic experience that kind of filters in and out, you know, what, what, what I want based on, let's say, preference, conditioning, et cetera. Let's say conditioning um, as sort of an umbrella term. By the, by the end of that experience, through breath, movement, sharing, connection, exposure, disclosure, um, touch, intimacy. My, 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 my shame dissolved, my judgments dissolved, many of these barriers dissolved. And one of the things that they said at the beginning of this workshop was, by the end of this experience, you'll be in love, you will be in love with everyone in this room. And I thought, what a bold claim. Mm -hmm. Well, at the end of the experience, I stood in the middle of the circle and very intentionally went around one by one and looked every person in the eye. And by the time I had completed that circle, I said, they told us at the beginning of this workshop that we would be in love with everyone in this room. And I thought that was a bold claim. I said, I stand here in this moment in love with everyone in this room. Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking about the kind of love where it's like, I want to have sex with you and I want to marry you and I want to be in a, in a romantic partnership with you. That's not what I'm talking about. It's that through this process, all the hangups I had about like my preferences in terms of gender and body types and skin colors and hair colors and eye colors and do 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 get it all kind of and penis sizes and vulva shapes and size and it just it all gone away it had all gone away and and if i may be explicit i'd even had for all intents and purposes m m my first official experience with a vulva and it was beautiful you know this to me 
is what's possible when we enter into a space um, like we're pointing to now, like Matt described, where we meet what is happening with inquiry, with curiosity, with openness, you know? Um, we start to allow more in, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I was reminded of that when you were speaking, Matt, and it just, to me, it points to what's possible, you know? I love that. You're willing to have the conversation when you're willing to, mm -hmm. to, to stay in the game. <laughs> it's a great illustration of how the exact question of how we can learn to create space. So thank you guys for, for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. So let's look at the other side of it now, right? So that's one side of it. How can you create space for more diversity? But did if you, you answer? Um, did I answer? I don't know. Uh, you did. Oh, I we can push it. we can push the, the last question into the next episode because it's about belonging. If you want to yeah, answer this. Right. Part. Okay. Okay, and cool. then that way we can have, yeah, we'll wrap up after you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I think everything that you guys said, right? It's the it's the judgment, Matt. You had a, like the way you described it with your hockey um, yeah. experience was really good, right? Like, just no. I mean, not you can't turn off judgment. You're a human being. We just we can't turn that off. We just naturally evaluate things, right? Uh, yeah. But watch it. Watch it happening. Watch it as if you're the witness of it, and just notice. Just notice. Oh, that's interesting. Look how I'm, look how I'm imagining that, or look at the story I just told about this person. Uh, you guys both had really good examples of that in a tangible situation. So I think that that's one way. Um, another one is like very simply, like when I see people at bars by themselves, I will go say hi. Mm -hmm. um, because not because it's coming from a noble place of like, oh, I want to to like include them. But I've been traveling by myself and I've gone to bars by myself and I've gone to restaurants by myself. And I know how difficult of an experience that isn't how mm -hmm. much courage it requires and i would be sitting there thinking like please someone come talk to me i don't care who it is so now when i see other people alone i'll go talk to them also hey you know what, what are you up to are you waiting for somebody you know and so on make a conversation i get very clearly if it's a if if they're like yeah, like don't talk to me then i'm like hey have a nice night bye um which happens sometimes and that's fine but sometimes they're like, oh my gosh, like, that's so nice of you. Thank you for coming to talk to me. And I'll, you know, in some cases, invite them over with my friends and whatnot. But like, it's these little things, right? Like if you just open your eyes and, you know, take those blinders off and just look around and ask yourself, I wonder what the experience of that person is right now. The empathy will kick in, you know, and be like, oh, wait, I've felt alone before too. I've felt isolated before too. I have felt left out. I have felt alienated, ostracized, scared, whatever. And if you can tap into that and just say, you know what, just this for this one little minute, I'm going to go check in and say hi. I'm going to go see what's up over there. That little thing, that like moment can make a huge difference in someone's life. Mm -hmm. So it's not even these big sweeping changes we need to make. Like, especially if I'm talking to the, you know, one person out there who's like, I can't change, you know, I can't change gay culture by myself, but you can change your little, your little corner of it. And that's important. Mm -hmm. Michael, you just reminded me of this experience that I had. And like, let me preface by saying, I don't want to, like, I don't want a cookie. I don't want an award. I don't want a medal. I'm not sharing this because I want to be recognized for it. Or I think I'm some like noble person because of it. Um, it's an example of like what you're describing. I used to go to this bar here locally and God rest his soul, this man passed away. Um, but he used to show up in one of those electric wheelchairs because he was disabled. And um, I remember I would see him there and, you know, he, people didn't really engage with him so much. And I can only speculate about why that was. It might be because they didn't know how or they were uncomfortable or what would they say or it didn't occur to them or whatever. And so I remember one time I just decided to go over to him and have a conversation with him. And and like, yeah, it was kind of awkward because I'm like, oh, what if he like thinks I'm weird or like rejects me or something, yeah. you know, or whatever. Um, but we ended up having a beautiful dialogue. And then, you know, like he dances in his wheelchair and I'm dancing with him next to the wheelchair, which again is like initially because I've never done it before it's like this awkward experience right I'm like how do you dance with someone in a wheelchair all I've known to this point is dancing with people who aren't in wheelchairs um but eventually 
it just went away and I was just being with this person on a dance floor, you know, and, and, um, and so, you know, like, as you described, it's like, sometimes it just takes us kind of leaning into the discomfort and moving through that edge and trying something new and then going, oh, wow, actually all these hangups I had, like, it, you know, they're, they're, they're gone, yeah. you know, they're gone. The hangups are very much here yeah. and you make such a big deal about right. these things that are really not a big deal at all. Yeah. 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 Totally. totally. I'm going to give you a cookie anyway. Quick. Yeah. yeah get a cookie from me too. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Um, I went to the bar this weekend by myself and I got there really early and I, I was one of the only people there. So I started playing pool by myself and, uh, and then everybody started showing up and I was still playing pool by myself. And uh, the cool thing about going on your own and I was noticing judgments like, Oh, you're a loner. Um, and, uh, and then I also noticed that I'm very, because uh, I was keeping my heart open, I'm a lot more approachable um, when I'm alone because people were coming up to me, talking to me. I made some really great friends that night. Whereas if I was with people, I wouldn't have had that openness. I would have been like, this is my group. This is who I'm with. So it's cool when you go somewhere alone that you're very, and we experienced this when we travel. I was in my own home city and I still got to meet a lot of cool new people. So yeah, yeah, it's an awesome. interesting experience. I think everybody should try it at least once. Yes. Hmm. Yes. All right, guys, we are at time for this episode. Is there anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up? No, I just love that. Like, you know, this is a conversation and it's ongoing. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 the beginning theme, or the continuation or, you know, the theme of the month is diversity. Um, so, I mean, if you're in the Gaiman's Brotherhood, we got a couple episodes. We got some journal uh, questions and sharing our opinions and whatnot. So please join us there. Um, I want to thank Matt and thank Reno for your wisdom as always. Uh, thank you, viewer listener, for sticking through the episode with us. We got a lot more on this topic for the rest of the month, so uh, stick around. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts as well, uh, or anywhere you could subscribe. Please leave us a review and share with us your thoughts on the episode. We love reading the comments from you guys, um, so please do share with us your own thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.